I move like the city. With the skyscraper stand. I move like the city. With the money rubber band. I move like the city. Where everything's fast. I move like the city. And car lights fly. I move like the city. With the skyscraper stand. I move like the city. With the money rubber band. I move like the city. Where everything's fast. I move like the city. And car lights fly. Hey, yo, my neighborhood is like a video set. Yeah. Cameras move slow when the street get wet. Action. Shake them up, roll money down, it's a bet. Uh-huh. G's on the set, throw it up right to left. I move like the city, so the streets come with me. Back pocket whiskey, keep me all pissy. Street thoughts got the feeling like a seesaw. Up, down, back up, I need to see more. The lean so mean, the gear all clean. Left arm up, steering the machine. Eyes in the rear view, gotta keep a clear view. When that money talk, the block gonna hear you. Ride with a rider, it'll be Every ass a movie, the script got it. Good evening, my friends. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Billy Murphy, and we're going to talk about how to deal with the police. I've been a judge, but I'm best known as a criminal defense lawyer. I know how the law works, and I know that for many people, the law sometimes doesn't work. But I'm going to show you how to make the law work for you. I see how the choices my clients make have a massive impact on the outcomes of their police encounters, even if and especially if you've done nothing wrong. There are lots of good police out there doing what needs to be done. And I don't need to tell you that there are also few too many cops who don't respect the basic rights of innocent people. But you don't get to choose who you're dealing with. And even the nicest cop will use your mistakes against you. That's precisely why every citizen, every one of you, must possess the tools to confidently assert your rights if you have to. By the show of hands, who's here because either you, a friend, or a family member has been on the business end of a bad police encounter? Then you're in the right place. Who's got a story they want to share with the class? What's your story? I got hassled by Highway Patrol the other day. Tell us about that. When that money talk, the black boy hear you. Ride with a rider, it'll be the I was ready to explode. This was like the fourth time this year I've been pulled over for nothing. (sighs) License and registration? Yeah, I know the drill, man. Excuse me? License? Registration. No need for the attitude there, bro. I'm looking out for your safety and everyone else's on this road. Whatever, man. Okay, step out of the vehicle for me. Turn around and put your hands in the air. Turn around and put your hands in the air. Gosh, man. Walk forward. Walk forward. Hands on the hood. Hands on the hood of the car. Do it. What are you doing, man? Relax. I didn't do anything. Relax. I didn't do anything. You got a bad attitude. Now, I pulled you over because you were swerving between lanes. That's all. Now, you got a choice here. If you cooperate, you're going to make things a whole lot easier on yourself. Now, what that means is you got to be straight with me. You understand? Yeah. Here's the deal. You don't speak unless I ask a question. You understand? Yeah. All right. Oh, that hurts, man. That's too tight. Relax. You're fine. Now, where are you coming from? College. I'm coming home from college, man. You've been having problems with gangs moving guns down this highway. You're not packing any Tech Nines in there, are you? No. No, sir. So you don't mind if I take a look? Ah, uh, go ahead. All right, Darren, you just relax. You don't move. Stand up. Stand up. Walk back with me. Keep walking. Keep walking. 
All right, have a seat. Have a seat, Darren. Now cross your legs. Cross your legs! And when that cop was done roughing me up, he made me sit there like a dog while he ripped up my car. I've got nothing to hide, but that's disrespectful. All right, you sit tight. I sat there forever while he hung out in his car. All right, Darren, stand up. Stand up. Turn around. <sighs> this is a citation for excessive lane change. You take care of this as soon as possible. Sign that. Sign it. Here's your copy. Get your sh my road. That cop profiled me. It's ridiculous. I go to school, I'm not a gun trafficker. I know exactly how you feel, man. That's why we're here. It's certainly possible you were profiled, but it's practically impossible to prove that. You never know for sure what's going on in an officer's head. I hate to say it, but from what I hear, it sounds like you broke the first rule of dealing with the police. Always be calm and cool. Hold up, are you saying that he deserved to get treated like that? No, what I'm saying is a police encounter is absolutely the worst time and place to vent your frustrations about police. Getting stopped by police is always frustrating and scary, but you could have played it much smarter by being calm and cool. As soon as you opened your mouth, you failed the attitude test. License and registration? <sighs> yeah, I know the drill, man. Your attitude only got worse. <sighs> Whatever, man. Don't ever talk right. back. Step out of Don't ever right. raise your voice. Don't ever Step use out. profanity with a police officer. Turn around, put your hands in the air. Being hostile with police is stupid and dangerous. Well, you can't win the... that game on the street the where they're the king. Police have a dangerous job. Even the most professional officers might become aggressive if they feel threatened or if their authority is challenged. Always control your words, the tone of your voice and your body language. If you're visibly scared and angry, it's easy for an officer to get scared and angry too. Things could have turned out way worse than they did. Now! On your stomach! On your stomach! Can you think of a better way you could have greeted that officer? Good evening, officer. How's it going? That's better. Calm and cool. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's all this polite talk? They don't respect us, so why should we respect them? For real. This isn't just about respect. It's about common sense. If you don't check your ego at the door, and you let it take control of you during a police encounter, you'll regret it every time. Following the rules doesn't guarantee that the police will respect your rights, but they can keep you from digging yourself into a deeper hole. Let's talk about what your rights are in the first place. This is the Bill of Rights. These are the first 10 amendments that were added to the US Constitution after it was ratified in 1789. These rights are protected under federal law, which means everything we're talking about today applies in all 50 states. There are three amendments in particular that protect your rights during police encounters. The Fourth Amendment states that the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. The Fifth Amendment states that no person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. 
During a police encounter, the smartest way to take the fifth is just to keep your mouth shut. Because you always have the right to remain silent. We'll talk in a minute about how this works. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. So if the police interrogate or arrest you, asking for a lawyer is a good way to assert your right to remain silent. Lawyer up. That's right. Regardless of what you have seen on TV, police don't usually have to read you your rights, even if you're arrested. So it's up to you to make sure that you understand the law and make smart choices. If police flag you down, pull over immediately, turn off your car, and place your hands on the wheel. The police like to see your hands for their own safety, so wait until they request your paperwork before reaching for it. At night, it's also a good idea to turn on the interior light so that the officer can see you're not armed. Darren, do you see any ways you could have handled yourself better? Good evening, officer. How's it going? Did you know you were swerving between lanes? No, officer. Let me see your license and registration. Sure. My license. Here's my registration. Now, Darren, we've had some problems with gangs moving guns down this highway. You're not packing any Tech Nines, are you? No, sir. I didn't think so. So you don't mind if I take a look, do you? Officer, I know you're just doing your job. I don't have any guns or whatever, but I don't consent to searches. Perfect. Rule number three, you have the right to refuse searches. This comes directly from the Fourth Amendment. For your Fourth Amendment protection to legally apply, you must be prepared to clearly state your refusal under pressure. Everyone, repeat after me. I don't consent to searches. I don't consent to searches. The officers can't hear you, so say it again. I don't consent to searches. One more time. I don't consent to searches. You a law student or something? So if I show that I know the rules, he might think I'm a law student. Or maybe I got big legal connections. Perhaps. But don't get carried away by saying stuff like, I know my rights, my Get out of my face, I'ma sue you. Never tell the officer you know your rights. Show the officer you know your rights by asserting them calmly. You seem nervous. Is there anything in this car I need to know about? No, officer. All right, please step out of the vehicle. Police may legally order you out of your vehicle, so you should comply. Walk back here with me. Stand right here for me. Now, you got two choices. You can make this better or worse for yourself. Now, if you cooperate, it's going to make things a lot easier on you. Beware Stand. that the police Stand. may Stand. legally lie to you, so never let false threats or promises trick you into waiving your rights. Now, if you don't, I'm going to call up a K-9 unit, and those dogs are going to rip apart your car. They're going to find what you're hiding. So what's it going to be? Refusing a search request is not evidence of guilt and doesn't give the officer the legal right to search or detain you. Don't get tricked. Unless you're detained or arrested, you may terminate the encounter at any time. But don't wait for the officer to dismiss you. Simply ask if you're free to go. Darren, those dogs are going to rip apart your car, and they're going to find what you're hiding. Like I said, what's it going to be? Officer, are you detaining me, or am I free to go? Good. This line can help withdraw you from an encounter. Saying you want to leave establishes that the encounter is not voluntary, which could help you later if you end up in court. Let's practice that line. Everyone repeat after me. Are you detaining me? Or am I free to go? Are you detaining me or am I free to go? One more time. Are you detaining me or am I free to go? All right. You want to play it like that? You want to bump it up to the next level? Fine. You stay right here. Don't go anywhere. 
Asserting your rights won't make the police love you, but it might make them extra cautious about violating your rights. Darren, this is a citation for excessive lane changing. Take care of that as soon as possible. Thank you, officer. I understand refusing a search doesn't make me guilty, but if I'm doing nothing wrong, why don't I just let the police search me and get it done with? You have the right to let police search you. You also have the right to refuse. The choice is yours. But there are some reasons to think carefully about this. The officer isn't your butler. Searches can get real messy. If they damage anything, you might not be compensated because you agreed to the search. Besides, you never know for sure what a careless person, relative, friend, previous owner might have left in your car at some point. If the police find any illegal items after you consent to a search request, you can be arrested even if you had nothing to do with it. You have the right to Consenting to a search request automatically makes the search legal in the eyes of the law. And the Fourth Amendment doesn't require officers to tell you about your right to refuse. So if you're pulled over, don't try to figure out whether or not the officer has probable cause to legally search you. You always have the right to refuse searches. I don't consent to searches. But they're going to search us anyway. Sometimes they will, but saying no isn't just about stopping the search. It might stop the search or it might not. Cross your legs. The point is that refusing the search could help you later if you end up in court. If the police search you without consent, your lawyer can challenge that. As your attorney, I'd be much more likely to win your case if you said no to the search. If I do not consent, when are police allowed to search my car? You mentioned probable cause. <laughs> what does that mean? Probable cause means police must have clear facts or evidence to believe you're involved in criminal activity. In other words, an officer's hunch without evidence of illegal activity is not enough to search or arrest you. But it doesn't take much. Most avoidable police searches happen not because police have probable cause. They happen because people get tricked or intimidated into consenting. So an expired registration isn't probable cause to search my car? No, it's not. But you still got to be careful. Courts are eager to uphold police searches, so something suspicious about you or your car could be considered probable cause. I'm not the kind of guy to tell you how you should express yourself. Expressing yourself is one thing, but exposing yourself to police by being a public nuisance is ignorant. Everybody knows who I roll with. Rule number six, don't expose yourself. Mr. Murphy, I appreciate you being here today talking about constitutional rights and all. But in my hood, police don't care about nobody's right. They do whatever they want. Tell us more. The other day, I was leaving my building on my way to work. Uh huh. Ahorita, yeah. En 30 minutos llego. A las 5 dentro, chequeé el esquejo. Sumo, ahí te caigo. No, no voy a llegar tarde. Voy, voy. Ok, va. You. Let me see your hands. Put them on the car. Spread. Where's the dope, man? Come on, give it up. I ain't got nothing. Let me see your pockets. Pull them out. Your ID? Got an ID here. Run that, please. Let me see your hat. I seen you coming out of there. Yeah, that's a known drug spot. It's my home. That's where I live at. You go to school? Are you working? I work at a restaurant. That's where I'm going. Okay. He's clean. Get your stuff. Thank you for your cooperation. You stay out of trouble. This is not the first time. It probably ain't the last. That's how they do around here. I'm not surprised. In cities across the country, these stop and frisks are occurring at record rates, especially in low-income communities of color. They happen so frequently, they seem perfectly normal to you. Yeah, that's how they do. This might be common, but that doesn't make it right. 
In fact, it sounds like those cops searched you illegally. Let me see your hands. Put them on the car. Spread them. If police have reasonable suspicion to believe you're involved in a crime, they're legally allowed to detain you for a short period of time. Reasonable suspicion requires less evidence than probable cause, but it basically means the officer has some specific reason to believe that you're up to something. For example, police can legally stop someone who matches the description of a criminal suspect, a suspect who drops a suspicious object after seeing the police, or someone who runs away after seeing the police. Don't ever run from the police. That's part of what the officers can use for probable cause. And they'll run you down and make you regret it. But if you see police approaching, be calm and assert your rights if need be. But don't run. If they have reasonable suspicion to detain you, police may pat down the outside of your clothing to check for weapons, but only if they have a basis for suspecting that you're armed. If they feel a hard item that might be a weapon, the police may pull it out of your pocket to check it out. Police may ask you to show them what's in your pockets. Remember, you don't have to do it. Let me see Emptying your pockets is the same as consenting to a search, and you always have the right to refuse. In your case, uh, there appeared to be no basis to justify their stop and frisk. It happened so fast, it was over before I even knew it. What could I have done different? You don't have a lot of immediate options here. If police detain and frisk you, you have the right to clearly state your refusal to the consent to the search. Officer, I'm not resistant, but I do not consent to searches. But you should only verbally refuse, never physically resist, never. Just touching a cop could get you tasered or beaten. You could also get charged with felony assault. Face forward. Sometimes people get in trouble for merely standing near others holding contraband or if it is found nearby. Look what we have here. Police may try to get you to snitch on yourself or on others, but remember that police may legally lie to you, so don't get tricked into waiving your rights. Mm. Uh. We know you bought this weed. That makes you part of a drug conspiracy. Now, you give up your supplier, or else we're going to charge you as an accessory to drug trafficking. I'm going to remain silent. I'd like to see a lawyer. I'm going to remain silent. I'd like to see a lawyer. If you're being interrogated or you're under arrest, these magic words are your best legal protection. They're kind of like a legal condom. Say them with me. I'm going to remain silent. I'd like to see a lawyer. I seen you drop this, man. Just admit it's yours. It's a slap on the wrist. You make things difficult for me, and I'll charge you with possession and evidence tampering. That's a felony. Don't get tricked. You know what to say. If police pressure you to snitch, you need a lawyer. Use the magic words. Officer, I'm going to remain silent. I'd like to see a lawyer. But remember, just because you ask for a lawyer doesn't mean they have to stop questioning you. If you keep talking, your words might still be used against you, so shut your mouth until you've seen a lawyer. But when do you actually get a lawyer? That depends. If you keep your mouth shut, you might not even need one. But if you're arrested and charged with a crime, you need help. If you can't afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you by the court. The point is that you can't talk your way out of a police interrogation without a lawyer. That's a big mistake. Almost anything you say to the police can and will be used against you in court. But what if the police try to make you sign a confession or something? Don't sign anything without a lawyer. And don't rely on the police to explain what it says. Read it for yourself. Usually, the only document that's safe to sign is a promise to appear in court. What if police come up to me just asking for ID? Hey, hold up, man. Let me see your ID. Carrying an ID is required when you're driving, but there's otherwise no law requiring you to carry an you ID. But in some states, police can require you to give your name if they have reasonable suspicion to believe you're involved in criminal activity. 
how do you know if police have reasonable suspicion? Remember, police need reasonable suspicion to detain you. So one way to tell if they have reasonable suspicion is to ask if you're free to go. Hey, hold up, man. Let me see your ID. Excuse me, officer. Are you detaining me or am I free to go? I just want to talk to you, man. What's your name? Are you detaining me or am I free to go? I'm not detaining you, man, but... I promise I'm clean. I sure don't was, got time man. to chat. Got to go. What if they don't let me go? Then you're being detained because the officer thinks there's some reason to suspect you of a crime. Let's see some ID. Excuse me, officer. Are you detaining me or am I free to go? Turn around put your hands up on the wall. In that situation, you could be arrested if you refuse to reveal your identity. Technically, police can't make you identify yourself anytime they want. But on the street, withholding your identity frequently leads to a detention or even an arrest. If your goal is to just get the encounter over with, then identifying yourself might be your best option. But if you're prepared to fight things out in court, you can flex your rights by refusing to cooperate with random ID requests. You say those police broke the rules searching me like that? What am I supposed to do? Call the cops on them? <laughs> Listen, fighting back against police misconduct is never easy, but it gets easier if you know your rights and if you act appropriately. What do I do? File a complaint? Does anyone read those? Oh, yeah, they read them for sure. There are lots of bad cops who are off the streets because they get too many complaints. In cases of severe police misconduct can result in major lawsuits that change the way the police behave. I know that because I filed my share of them successfully. Here's what you need to know about reporting police misconduct. During the encounter, pay close attention to details. Remember the order of events. Remember as much as you can about the officers. What did they look like? What were their names? What were their badge numbers? Although you should never ask them for their badge number, that means to them you're about to make a complaint, and boy, does it get bad for you if they know that. So never tell them you're going to make a complaint against them. Remember the exact words that the officer said. Where's the door? I ain't got nothing. Come on, man, give it up. As soon as you can, get everybody together who saw or heard anything about the incident. Sit down with them together. Listen to their recollections. Use whatever device you can yeah, to I collect your thoughts. The work. longer you wait, the less the you will remember. There's a black cop and a white cop. Put him on the car. And try to find other witnesses if you can. You'll need this evidence later. Reaching in the bag, man. Didn't if you were injured during a police incident, make sure somebody photographs you at your worst as soon as possible. Make copies of any relevant hospital records. If you're thinking about responding to a police misconduct incident, visit flexyourrights.org to learn more about your options. Don't be discouraged just because you've heard about police abusing their power and getting away with it. Now that you know your rights, you've got more power to demand accountability. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Murphy. Is it legal for, for the police to go around knocking on people's doors, asking for, uh, asking to search? Unfortunately, yes. Did something happen? It was last Saturday afternoon. I was in my home relaxing after a long week. Have you been in an accident, injured on the job? You need a lawyer with experience, integrity, and a commitment to you, the citizen of this great nation. Call me, Boris Krakowitz. Who is it? Police Department. Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Officer Smith. What's your name? I'm Karen Stewart. Er everything all right? How can I help you? Miss Stewart, do you mind if we come in for a moment? One second. Man, officer.
Officer Jones here are introducing ourselves to the tenants as part of a new home safety program. We're available if you need any help. Miss Stewart, are you here alone? Oh uh, yes, my granddaughter lives here too, but she's at school. I'm sure you know there's been some gang-related shootings in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Well, we're trying to do something to get the guns off the streets and we're asking folks to help out. Of course. How can I help? Well, if you don't mind, we'll take a quick look around to make sure there's no guns in your home you might not know about. <laughs> there are no guns in here. Go ahead. Great. Just sign this form for me, please. I appreciate your cooperation. Miss Stewart, I see you have an extensive book collection. You like to read a lot? Oh, I love to read. Mm -hmm. I'm always reading something. <laughs> oh, okay. I love to read too, but between my job and my two children, I just don't have the time anymore. <laughs> I understand that. So you say your granddaughter is in school? College? Yeah, yes, uh-huh. She's a freshman. Oh, Ma'am, I'm gonna search this couch here. You mind stepping up for me? Uh oh. What's this? Can I tell me about this marijuana I just found on your couch? What's that? Don't play dumb. You know what it is. It isn't mine. I I cook for some of the children in, in the neighborhood. Somebody probably left it there by mistake. I, I, I don't know. You really ought to pay more attention to what happens in your home. <laughs> Miss Stewart, I appreciate your cooperation. I hate to do this. Please put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest. An arrest? What are you arresting me for? I, I, I don't know. I, I, it isn't mine. Miss Stewart, I, I'm, I'm taking you to the station. You can tell your story to the judge. Turn to your right. You don't have to do this. No, stop. Stop. The worst part is I live in public housing and there's a zero tolerance rule. I'm fighting the eviction order now. Did you all hear that, folks? Remember that the next time somebody tells you nobody ever gets in trouble for weed. I shouldn't have let them inside. See, this is how they get you. Police come knocking at your door saying, hey there, we've got a new safety program. Can we search your home? Hell no. You don't have to let them in. Even if the police have probable cause, the Fourth Amendment requires them to get a signed search warrant from a judge to enter and search your home. Unless there's a serious emergency, they can't come in without a search warrant. But they don't need a warrant if you invite them in. When the officers came knocking, Karen could have talked to them outside and Close the door behind her. Good afternoon, officers. How can I help you? The chain lock works fine, too. Who is it? Police department. Good afternoon, officers. How can I help you? Hi, ma'am. Do you mind if we come in for a moment? Do you have a warrant? What is this about? No, my name is Officer Smith. This is Officer Jones. We're introducing ourselves to the tenants as part of a new home safety program. Mind if we come in? Uh, no, thank you. I can't let you in without a warrant. Again? I can't let you in without a warrant. That is your decision, ma'am. But this is just a public safety check. We're not here to get anyone in trouble. 
I understand, but I need to see a warrant before letting you folks inside. Well, ma'am, you have my card if you need anything. Have a nice day. Take care. We're clear. If police come to your door and you don't need their help, you may simply decline to answer the door. Because you don't have to let them in unless they have a search warrant. We've covered a lot today, but we've only scratched the surface. If you want to learn about the 10 rules for dealing with police, contact us at the website, flexyourrights.org. Any more questions? Set. Yeah. Cameras move slow when the street get wet. Action. Shake them up, roll money down, it's a bet. Uh -huh. G's on the set, throw it up right to left. I move like the city, so the streets come with me. Back pocket whiskey, keep me all pissy. Street thoughts got the feeling like a seesaw. Up, down, back up, I need to see more. The lean so mean, the gear all clean. Left arm up, steering the machine. Eyes in the rear view, gotta keep a clear view. When that money talk, the block gonna hear you. Ride with a rider, it'll be Diana. Every ass a movie, the script got drama. So bricks, your boy gets busy. Watch how I move, I move. Like the city, I move like the city. With the skyscraper stand, I move like the city. With the money rubber band, I move like the city. Where everything's fast, I move like the city. And car lights fly, I move like the city. With the skyscraper stand, I move like the city. With the money rubber band, I move like the city. Where everything's fast, I move like the city. And car lights fly, I move like the city. Headlights flashing, black and mild smoking, two Dutch grabbing. I write about my life, this ain't rapping. Skyscraper talk, yeah, what's happening? They play a role player, which type player you? Sexy. Seen me a dream caught by the power you right queen wrong king showing what his power do gun spark out the side of a Malibu I'm not mortal my city is a portal for life givers trying to grow through the soil some talk a lot and that's not loyal some birth poor and others birth royal chickens by corner store liquor store church go I hope I double up call me new off Noah brick city pretty lights please y'all get it right I move like the city this that city like move like the city with the skyscraper stand I move like the city with the money rubber band I move like the city with everything I move like the city, and car lights fly. I move like the city, with the skyscraper stand. I move like the city, with the money rubber band. I move like the city, where everything's fast. I move like the city, and car lights fly. Working people hustling, it's all in together now. Uh -huh. Hear my voice, we can shut the city down. Move it, move it, move it, move it, move it.